scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, and who bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on course at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. Jesus Christ. Let's start tonight with Isaiah chapter 40. Isaiah chapter 40 from verse 1 to 5. Isaiah chapter 40 from verse 1 to 5. Comfort ye, comfort ye my people, saith your God. We're reading to 5. Speak ye comfortably to Jerusalem and cry unto her that her warfare is accomplished and that her iniquity is pardoned. For she had received of the Lord double for all her sins. Next verse. The voice of him that crieth in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a high way for our God. Every valley, he says, shall be exalted. Somebody should shout amen. amen. And every mountain and hill shall be made low, and the crooked shall be made straight, and the rough play, places plain. Verse 5, and the glory of the Lord shall be revealed and all flesh shall see it together for the mouth of the Lord hath spoken it. The Bible is very clear as to the fact that God desires that the fullness of his glory be revealed in the midst of his people. It has always been his desire that his people experience the full weight of his glory. Now, in very simple terms for the sake of this conference, the glory of anything is an attempt to describe what makes it valuable. So, the glory of a thing describes its essence and every feature represented in it that makes it worth our admiration and worth our desire. When you talk about glory, the root expression of the word glory is the weightiness of a thing. It was used in ancient times to measure money. You know, the coins that they had, gold. So the heavier, the weightier, the more valuable. So when we talk about the glory of a thing, anything at all, we have to investigate the various components that make whatever that is special or great or unique. I give you an instance. The glory of an electronic gadget like this phone or your iPad or whatever it is. For you to appreciate the glory of that gadget, you will have to study the features that make that gadget expensive and makes it desirable. Are we together now? You cannot truly understand the glory of a thing until you can dissect the various characteristics of that object. So when we talk about the glory of God, we refer to all the dimensions of God that make him God. The glory of God is a summation of his wisdom, his power, his goodness, his mercy, his kindness. Everything that all together makes God, God. And the Bible says he desires that the full expression 
of all the multifaceted dimensions of him find expression in our lives and across our territories. And may that be someone's, um, may that be someone's miracle tonight. That your life will suddenly become a capture. Do you know what that means? It, it means, uh, the, the apostle puts it this way. He calls us living epistles. You know what that means? You become a continuation of what was written in the Bible. That means if someone did not have his quiet time, he will stop feeling bad when he sees you because you are a continuation of the scripture that he was reading. Everything he read that he did not understand, your life becomes an explanation of it. A revelation of the glory of God. In Isaiah 35, we'll read very quickly from verse 1 to 6, then I'll begin to teach. Isaiah chapter 35, 1 to 6. The wilderness, it says, and the solitary place shall be glad for them, and the desert shall rejoice and blossom as the rose. It shall blossom abundantly and rejoice even with joy and singing. The glory of Lebanon shall be given to it, the excellency of Carmel and Sharon. They shall see the glory of the Lord and the excellency of our God. Next verse. It says, strengthen ye the weak and confirm the feeble knees. Say unto them that are of a fearful heart, be strong, fear not. Behold, your God will come with vengeance, even God with a recompense. He will come and save you. The eyes, when the glory of the Lord is revealed, part of the many things that happen as attestations to the fact that his glory has been revealed is that the eyes of the blind will open spiritually and physically. The ears of the deaf will be unstopped. Verse 6. The Bible says, Then shall the lame man leap as an heart, and the tongue of the dumb sing, for in the wilderness shall the waters break out and streams in the desert. The glory of God is a revelation of everything that makes God, God. So when you talk about manifesting or revealing the glory of God, it means that you desire to see all the attributes of God in full display. The attributes of wisdom. Wisdom beyond your age. Wisdom beyond your level of exposure. Wisdom beyond um, your, your education. A manifestation of wisdom that dumbfounds principalities and powers. The Bible calls it the hidden wisdom of God. That he has reserved for our glory. So there is an expression of the glory of God revealed as wisdom. There is the expression of God revealed as power. The ability to be invincible. To subdue principalities and powers. To subdue circumstances. And to bring them to the obedience of Christ. Can I tell you this? When you say and it happens, you are powerful. The litmus test of spiritual power is found in Genesis chapter 1. From verse 2 to 4. We'll go there maybe later on or in another session. But this is what it means to have power in this kingdom. The earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Now watch power in action. And God said and there was. That is power. When you say and it becomes, it is a display of genuine power. When you say and it becomes, it is a revelation of the glory of God that is not given to man. Man cannot demonstrate that level of possibility unassisted. When you speak and it happens, it reveals to us that you are being assisted by an agency that is not human. Because humans cannot just speak and it happens. And then the Bible says in verse 4, it is not just to speak and it happens. The Bible says we must see it 
and what appears must be good. If you say it and it happens and we see it and it is good, it is the power of God. Listen carefully. This is the highest standard given to man to press into. God demonstrates what he means by spiritual power. We are discussing attributes that make up the glory. When the centurion came to Jesus, he said, For I am a man under authority. I have servants. I can say to one, Go, and he goeth. I can say to one, Come, and he cometh. When you tell things, Go, and they go. When you tell things, Come, and they come. When you tell situations, leave and they leave. You are demonstrating a level of power that no human was born with. The revelation of the glory of God. Manifesting possibilities that are not human. The wisdom of God. The power of God. Are we blessed? There are also certain attributes, other attributes of the glory of God. For instance, the blessing of the Lord upon the life of a man. I'm just giving you a background and then we'll teach on the core, the core topic that the Lord put in my heart tonight. But we have to understand this. For instance, the blessing of the Lord. When you manifest certain levels of of wealth and the blessing of the Lord that is beyond the intelligence of men. It's not just about the display of money. You demonstrate the intelligence of a government that is not earthly. Are we together now? The Bible says, let not the wise man glory in his wisdom. It says, let not the strong man or the mighty man glory in his might. Let not the rich man glory in his riches. It says, but let him that glory at glory in this, that he understandeth and knoweth me. There are other dimensions of glory, like speed. You see, let me tell you, the highest level of dominion is dominion over time. Listen carefully. You can have dominion over things, but when you have dominion over time, because the unit of destiny is time. True dominion is dominion over time. Because you see, from a human standpoint, time only moves forward. It cannot move backward. Are we together now? And that your destiny is represented in time. So when time goes before you and you do not maximize it, you are already disadvantaged. The ability to have dominion over time and command things like speed and restoration. Now, that is real dominion over time. Where God takes your 10 years and puts it in one year. There are other expressions of glory like favor. When someone just decides to invest their credibility, their love, their resources upon you, it is not normal because the heart of man by default is desperately wicked. Whatever will make a man forget about his own agenda and turn to you with a determination to see that you succeed, it cannot be human. Are we together? And there is a clear proof of favor. When the favor of God is at work in you, the Bible gives us very clear indices. For instance, Exodus 3 and verse 21. And I will give these people favor in the sight of the Egyptians. And it shall come to pass that when ye go, ye shall not go empty. Being empty has a spiritual explanation. Are we together? It takes favor to be established territorially that God will give you space because there is a dimension of dominion that is represented in land and it takes the manifestation of favor for that to happen. Psalms 44 and verse 3. Psalms 44 
and verse 3. They got not the land in possession by their own sword. Neither did their own arm save them. But thy right hand thine and thy arm, the light of thy countenance, because thou hadst a favor unto them. There are many other dimensions of favor, like honor. You know what honor is? Honor means to be perceived, to match your true worth. It is possible to be this high, but to be perceived this low. Honor makes sure that the perception people have about you is a true representation of your sacrifice. Many people do not have honor. They are good people, but that grace is not upon their life. Are we together? Yes. So these are the various expressions of glory. So when your life becomes an effulgence of the glory of God, we expect to see in perpetual display every day these dimensions from his wisdom to his favor to speed to excellence. You see that now? Excellence is another expression of that glory. To excel means to surpass ordinary standards. Oh Lord our God, he says, how excellent. His name is not only great, his name excels. Is someone learning tonight? Yes. So God desires that my life and your life become and remain expressions of his glory. That be, our lives will consistently be testaments of what God can do in and through men. So from his wisdom, to his wealth, to his favor, to his blessing, to speed, to honor. Your life becomes a, a recycling experience of these divine attributes. It will be impossible for this dark world to ignore you under that condition. The Bible says, arise, it says, shine for your light is come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. It says, for darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness the people. But upon you the glory of the Lord shall arise. And then verse 3 of Isaiah chapter 60, it says, Gentiles or nations shall come to your light and even their proud kings to the brightness of your rising. Listen, it is impossible to be ignored when your life becomes a perpetual effulgence of these attributes of glory. When Jesus walked upon the earth, listen, you know what made Jesus unique? It was not just that he was the son of God. They saw a display. Never had they seen such a rich combination of godlike qualities in a man. Never had they seen a display of wisdom and favor and power and love and kindness. That invincibility was, they said, who are you? The wisdom of God. Then the favor of God. Then the power of God, he will rebuke devils and they would leave. What manner of man is this? That even the winds and the waves obey him. To hear is not enough, they must obey. Are we together? Listen, I'm teaching you this because Jesus said, As my father had sent me, he said, so send I you. You know what it means? As my father has sent me with the same equipping. I send you. Your life should never be ordinary by any standard. Regardless the background, regardless the geography of your assignment, you don't have to be a man of God. You just need to be a believer with understanding. Unfortunately, dear people of God, many people do not live up to that standard. It is a mandate upon us that our lives reveal the glory of God. Here's how the Bible puts it. Jesus was teaching in Matthew chapter 5. When you read from verse 13, it says you are the salt of the earth. The assignment of salt is to add value and to preserve. Is that true? You are the salt of the earth, he says. That if the salt has lost its sever, wherewith shall it be salted? It is good for nothing but to be thrown down 
and you know cast down and trodden underfoot by men then he now tells us you are the light of the world you are in the similitude of a city that is set on a hill that cannot be hidden it says neither do men light a lamp and put it under a bushel but they put it on a lamp stand and it gives light to everyone there so let your light so shine before men that they might see your good deeds the display of these divine attributes according to God's desire for men your lips should not be the only instrument preaching the gospel your life should also be an evangelist not just in holiness and character that is wonderful but there should be a display of such possibility that people will look at you and say, is Saul also one of the prophets? From whence did you fetch this level of excellence and intelligence and power and grace? Psalms 82 and verse 5, the tragedy. They know not, neither will they understand. They walk on in darkness, the Bible says, and all the foundations of the earth are out of course. Verse 6 says, I have said, ye are gods, and all of you are children of the Most High. The tragedy is in verse 7, but you shall die like mere men and fall like one of these princes. The gap between prophecy and experience is knowledge. Not the knowledge of what you want, the knowledge of what it takes to manifest what you want. Many people know what they want. Midwifing prophecy and experience is knowledge. High level spiritual illumination. It is for this reason he gave unto some apostles and prophets and evangelists and pastors and teachers. Why? For the maturing of the saints. That the saints now matured will do the work of the ministry until we all come to the fullness of the stature of the measure of Christ. Are we learning? For the time that I have, let me pick one of those attributes or one of those requirements that will help us manifest the glory of God. And I'll just give a charge on it and we'll pray. Hallelujah. John 11 and verse 40, Jesus was teaching. This was Jesus about to raise Lazarus. The Bible says how that he loved Lazarus. Now Lazarus was dead. And they came crying and were probing as to why Jesus did not come on time. And Jesus made a very instructive statement. He said, Jesus said to her, said I not unto thee that if thou wouldest believe, Thou shouldest see the glory of God. You can see the glory of God manifesting as the power of God to raise the dead. But that you need to understand that your faith must be alive. I want to teach very briefly about faith. You know, I have discovered sincerely that most believers talk about faith. Most believers write books about faith even. But there are very few people who truly understand Bible faith. Hallelujah. If you do not understand the subject of faith, you will never truly be able to manifest the glory of God. There is a relationship between your faith in God and the expression of the glory of God in and through your life. If you are with me, please shout amen. Four times in scripture, the Bible tells us, I'll just read it through. We may not have the time to project it for sake of, for the sake of time. So we'll, I'll just read it so that we'll go to the main discourse. The just, the Bible says, shall live by faith. Four scriptures. You may want to write this down very quickly. Habakkuk chapter 2 and verse 4. It tells us that the just lives by faith. Habakkuk 2 and 4. Romans 1 17 also tells us that the just shall live even by his faith. Romans 1 17. Galatians chapter 3 and verse 11 also repeats this that the just shall live by faith. Galatians 3 11. Finally Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 
Hebrews chapter 10, is that 38? That the just shall live by faith. So four scriptures. Habakkuk 2.4, Romans 1.17, Galatians 3.11, Hebrews 10 and verse 38. All of these scriptures point very clearly that the just lives by faith. In Mark chapter 11, Mark chapter 11, from verse 22 to 24, theologically speaking, this is one of the classics on the discourse of Jesus about the subject of faith. He rebuked the three that would not produce and it withered. The disciples were perplexed. They wondered how a man could just speak to a tree and not use an axe or anything physical to fell it. And by in 24 hours, the tree would have withered. And Jesus was giving them an understanding. He said, have faith in God. Men like Papa Hagen would interpret this to mean have the faith of God. Next verse, 23. Verily I say unto you, Whosoever shall say to this mountain, Be thou removed and cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass. The Bible leaves you with an assurance that he shall have whatsoever he saith. Next verse. Here is the law of faith. Therefore I say unto you, What things soever ye desire, it says, When ye pray, Believe that you receive them and thou shall have them. Are we together? Hebrews chapter 11 from verse 1, it says, Now faith is the substance, the tangibility of the things that you hope for. It calls it the evidence of the things not seen. The evidence, the purchasing power. Like you can ask me, I can ask you to give me a bottle of water or get me a bottle of water. The moment I give you 100 naira or 200 naira, I didn't give you the bottle of water, but I gave you the power to purchase it. Is that true? That's what faith is, the currency that purchases spiritual realities for us in the realm of the spirit. It's called faith. The Bible says in Romans chapter 10, Romans chapter 10. Let's look at verse 17. Romans 10, 17. It says, So then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. It tells you that faith is mobile. It can move from one place to the other. It can move from a location outside your spirit into your spirit. Faith cometh. Faith Come and the Bible says it comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Let's define faith in very simple terms. What is faith? Please look up. Faith is not just believing. This is where many sincere believers get it wrong. Faith is more than believing. Believing is part of the process of faith. But faith is not believing. So many people tell you, I believe. That's wonderful. And you may be right. But just because you believe does not mean you have finished working in keeping with the law of faith. I believe God. I believe I'll be healed. I believe I will prosper. I believe the land will be good for me. I believe my children will be blessed. There are many people believing. And that is wonderful. But hear me, if all you do is just believe, meaning to agree, that is not enough. There are conditions. Listen, every promise in scripture has very specific conditions connected to it for its manifestation. Believing is one of the requirements, but not the only requirement. Are we together? Let's define faith. Here is my definition of faith. That faith is the name given to the action that we take. The name given to the action that we take. Actions of obedience. Based on our conviction of who God is and the integrity of his word. 
Faith is the name given to the action of obedience that we take. Not just believing. The name given to the action of obedience that we take. That action is based on our conviction. Number one, of who God is. And then the integrity of his word. This is Bible faith. Please let me have two gentlemen. Just come here. I want to illustrate something. Any two gentlemen at all. Please come. Thank you. Watch this. Let one of you stand here. I believe you can all see them. You just stand here. My friend, come stand. I want to show you what many believers do that we call faith. Now watch this. Let's assume this is what they both desire. Are we together? And now... I have told you that I am benevolent enough to let you have this. It is my will and my desire for you to have in this instance, this handkerchief. Now, this gentleman, when I ask you to come and pick it, tell me you are coming and tell me you believe me, but don't walk. Are you ready? Watch what many of us do. So, I am God in this example. Here is your healing. Here is your breakthrough. Here is your lifting. Here is the favor that I desire to give you. Like I said in my word. Come and have it. Are you seeing now? I'm giving it to him. He believes that I'm not lying. And yet he does not have it. Five years he's not had it. Ten years he's not had it. Fifteen years he's not had it. His pain now begins to build a theology about God. That God cannot reward. Just because he has been 15 years practicing what he believes to be faith. He will mentor other people after his limitation. That all it takes is to just believe. Now, I'm not being critical. I hope you understand what I'm saying. Then comes this fine young man who now understands what faith is. Now, when I ask you, you speak and walk to me. The condition is that you walk to me. Come, pick this. In one year, he has gotten it. A result that this man desired for 20 years. And now you are wondering, this is unfair. Because faith is not just believing. Faith is fulfilling the condition attached to commit God. The Bible says, having the readiness to judge all disobedience. If your obedience is complete. In one word, faith is obedience. In one word, faith is obedience. In one word, faith is obedience. If there is no obedience component to your definition of faith, it is not Bible faith. There may be speaking, there may be crying, there may be praying, but if it does not culminate to obedience, in fact, you can even take action. If it's not an action of obedience, it is still not faith. Back to my example one more time. Please stand, gentlemen. If I ask you to come here, walk to that gentleman. Come and pick this. He is taking action, but it's not an action of obedience. He will still suffer like the person who did not take action. Many people are taking action based on what they think should produce results. You don't just act the way you want. You act, you, I prophesied as I was commanded, not as I wanted. Are we learning? Thank you, gentlemen. God bless you. So faith in one word is obedience. Obedience to the scriptural requirements. The scriptural requirements that commit God to reveal his glory in you. Obedience to the scriptural requirements that commit God to reveal his glory in you. This is very powerful. That means for you to manifest Bible faith, you must understand what God has connect, has the, the conditions connected to every promise. Knowing the promise is not enough. You must understand the scriptural requirement. That commits God. For that promise to be made manifest. Deuteronomy chapter 28. From verse 1 and 2. 
for sake of time the bible says and it shall come to pass if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the lord thy god to observe to do observe to do not just to know observe to do all his commandments which i command thee this day it says that the lord thy god will set thee on high this is the promise claiming that you will rise above the nations is wonderful but it will only end you in frustration there is a condition attached to it and all this blessing shall come upon you and shall overtake you most believers have not paid attention to study the participatory roles that they have to play in committing God to reveal his glory in and through them. Whilst Ebed was ministering, I just sat there and I was enjoying the song, but I was also enjoying the excellence. And I thought to myself, look at this man acting my message. I could see a display of competence, not just the spirituality. And you would think it's just grace. It is grace. But it is the enabling grace because something was done. Excellence has an equation. Something plus something equals excellence. Are we together? You will have to find out the price of competence and rehearsals and discipline and diligence that produce what you celebrated as the manifestation of the glory of God. Now, when you see the glory of God in dis on display, it doesn't look like anything was done to prepare them. Remember, the nation of Israel wanted to see the glory of God and he told them, here is the condition. You are going to go through constraints for three days. Sanctifying yourself. If it is that glory you want to see, there is always a condition. Please look up. You want to prosper in the kingdom and manifest the glory of God. It's not just about claiming prosperity and jumping up and down. There are laws that you must walk in keeping with that enable that dimension of glory to be revealed in you. For instance, the law of diligence. For instance, the law of relationships. For instance, the law of creativity. These are all principles that synergize themselves together. You want to excel in life. You have to work in keeping with the principles of competence, the discipline of mastery. The Bible says he that strives for mastery is not crowned unless and except he strives lawfully. Are we together? Wishing and hoping that things change will be a total waste of time. Wishing and hoping and superstitiously just waiting for things to change is a total waste of time we have to understand that if we desire to see the glory of god revealed in our lives we must understand the principle of faith the principle of obedience the bible says that when men say there is a casting down we will say there is a lifting up he did not say we will think he didn't say we will lift he says we will say so your words is part of the instruments of constructing that power that you'll be lifted to. So you speak regardless what you see. You are declaring because the word of God says that your words is part of the ingredients that make for your greatness. That means the assignment to discipline and culture yourself to only speak words that are consistent with scripture is your participatory role in seeing that a great destiny happens. You cannot keep speaking words like one who is demonized and have the destiny of one who is disciplined in building with scripture. It cannot happen because remember, he sits upon a throne that is made of righteousness and justice. Are we learning? Yes, sir. Bible faith is based on two attributes of God. Please write it quickly. And then we will pray. You want to manifest Bible faith? 
it is predicated on two attributes of God. Very quickly, attribute number one is called his integrity. Bible faith is hinged on two attributes of God. Number one, his integrity. The word integrity comes from the expression or the word integer, sameness, consistency. Numbers chapter 23 and verse 29. Numbers 23 and 29. Numbers chapter 19, sorry, 23, 19, 23, 19. God is not a man that he should lie. That means men lie. Men don't lie because they are bad. They lie because they are men. It's a weakness in man that if not assisted through transformation, Lying is something that is enshrined in men. For various reasons, they lie. God is not a man that he should lie. Neither the son of man that he should repent. That means he does not make mistakes. Had he said, and shall he not do it? Had he spoken, and shall he not make it good? Do you know what this means? That every time God speaks, he submits to what he says. When God speaks, even him is bound by what he has said. In ancient times, kings were bound by their words. If they spoke foolishly, they would have to pay the price of stamping a foolish statement or speaking foolishly. Remember in the Bible, there were kings who even were willing to give half of their kingdom for silly reasons. It was lack of wisdom in a king that removed the head of a prophet called John the Baptist. For the dance of a young girl, he was willing to give even half of his kingdom without counsel. And he could not reverse it again. And John died. That's how powerful the word of a king is. Everybody say integrity. Can I tell you this? There are men who are sincere but they do not have integrity. Not because they are bad. It takes a lot of factors to have integrity. I can tell you I will meet you by six and my car spoils. Regardless the excuse, with respect to that appointment, I did not show integrity. Correct? Now that's not, that does not mean I am bad or evil. I, am, I was incapacitated. Factors happen beyond my control. But the Bible says when God speaks, he has examined all the factors. There is no such thing as speaking. And later he says, oh, I didn't know you are from Plateau State to, for me to have made such a statement that I will lift you. I didn't know your situation was peculiar. I didn't know that there would be a pandemic. God is not a man. That means you can trust what he says. This is powerful because see, dear people of God, there are no guarantees in life. Nobody gives you any guarantee anywhere. Young people, listen. Waiting for someone to guarantee your success is a total waste of time. There are no guarantees. Your guarantee is the integrity of God. God will send you to places with no human assistance. Your guarantee is that word. You will foolishly move as he speaks. Your guarantee is that word. He is a God of integrity. God can be trusted. Let me repeat it. God can be trusted. Don't get used to the disappointment you face from men. I promise you this, I didn't do it. I promise you that, I didn't do it. And you, you, you put God to join that queue. And you believe that just like this one disappointed me. I, I assure you and I bring you good news. Dear Plato, God can be trusted. My Bible and your Bible is full of stories of people 
who God spoke to. And as at the time he spoke to them, there was nothing in their life that looked like what he said. But the one with integrity had spoken. Abraham, I will make your name great. I will bless them that bless you. And curse him that curse you. And in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. He met a young boy hiding called Gideon. And he called him a mighty man of valor. Can I tell you this? When we study scripture, it gives us an opportunity to vet the integrity of God. God is not afraid to allow you probe his integrity. The Bible is a compendium of God's integrity that you search for yourself. And if you search well, you will conclude that this God can be trusted. Somebody shout, say, God can be trusted. Shake away unbelief. Say, God can be trusted. Regardless what I see, God can be trusted. Regardless the medical report, God can be trusted. I know you are sitting right now on a time bomb health-wise in, in the form of a medical report, but God can be trusted. Apostle, you are speaking like this because you do not know the huge bills that stand before me. I will still tell you to your face, God can be trusted. Is someone learning tonight? There are probably men of God here, respectfully speaking. You are saying, oh, the reason I'm not succeeding in ministry is because I'm in Joss. Or because I'm not from the plateau by, by tribe or whatever. Believe me. Those things may be very sincere consolations, but that's not the reason. God can be trusted. Ask the man Daniel. He reigned through the dispensation of three to four kings. What is on you is what determines what is around you. You can create through your faith a system of exemption. Are we together? Yes. I want to drum it to your heart. He has in integrity and he can be trusted there are men who can fail you there are men who can disappoint you there are offices you may enter in Nigeria where someone will tell you I promise you by this time next week if you are still in this position call me stupid and three years later you are still there God can be trusted. Someone turn that into a prayer in one minute. God can be trusted. His integrity. Go ahead and pray. Please pray. God can be trusted. Shake away unbelief. Lord, I believe what you told me about my children. I believe what you told me about my health. You told me death will not take me just like that. I believe you. Regardless the symptoms in my body, I believe you told me you will prosper me upon the plateau. That my life will be an expression of your glory. You told me you will help me even politically. You told me you will help my children. That none of them will be lost. As it is now, right now it looks like all my children are going haywire. But in the name of Jesus, I trust you. There are kings, there are kingdoms, there are mountains and there are thrones. Only a Shua will reign forever. To his kingdom there'll be no end. There are kings, there are kings. There are mountains and there are thrones, but only a shoe will reign forever. To his kingdom there'll be no end. Listen, there are names, there are offices, and even in that regard they are powerful. For instance, the president of any nation is powerful. Even as men, they can change your life with one signature. I've had the honor of meeting men of tremendous influence. And in one moment, 
when they rub off their credibility on you, it can literally alter the seasons of your life. If men can do that, ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the monarch of the universe. The one who is not threatened by the pride of men. They can say, where is your God? And he's still seated on the throne. If he vows a vow concerning your life, then let God be true and all men liars. Let God be true and all systems liars. Your assignment is to believe in that God. Please sit down. Only a shoe will reign forever. Can I tell you? Can I tell you? Based on wisdom, it is wiser to trust the one who does not have a date of birth. The mere fact that any man can present to you his date of birth already tells you there is a tendency for compromise in his ability to show integrity. There is one who we can search from end to end. We will never find his date of birth. Who gave birth to him? The Bible says in the beginning, not from the beginning. In the beginning. The beginning is a person. Listen, you know what I'm doing to you tonight? I'm shaking away unbelief because the strength of Satan is your senses. He will flush your financial situation, your health situation, and bring you to a point where you feel it is not worth it trusting God. God, is it true that you really sent me to Joss? My life has not shown it yet. Is it true that you called me into ministry? I'm tired of this expression of shame. Only a shoe will reign forever. To his kingdom there'll be no end. Listen, I say this with all humility and to the glory of the name of the Lord. It was in one room the Spirit of God began to show me the visions of the things that He is doing through my life today. From that one room, He said, I will take you to the nations. I will take you before kings. I believed Him. Stupid enough to believe Him. Childish enough to believe Him. With no human connection, I believed. God be true. How will it happen? Don't be like Mary. How shall these things be? Seeing that I know not a man. Every time you are afraid, remember the person talking. Every time you are afraid, remember the person talking. He told me, as you travel around, you will have the power to heal the sick. You will have the power to cast out devils. I believed, I believe. He told Joshua, no man will be able to stand against you all the days of your life. So when an angel appeared before Joshua, he removed his sword. He said, who are you? I will kill you with the word that was given to protect me. And he said, no. He had to explain why he came. Can I tell you this? God has integrity. Let me remind you again. God is a God of integrity. If he has told you, he will do it. Did you hear what I said? One scripture and then the other attribute. Genesis 21 verse 1. Someone by this night, you will go back to your old notes where God told you things that didn't make sense. You will dust those notes again and say, even though this note is 10 years old, Lord, let's revisit your word again. I'm sorry for my unbelief. I, I thought you were not aware of the pandemic, but right now, my faith is alive again. I wish you could read with me. As many who can see it projected, let's read together in concert. Ready? One to read. And the Lord visited Sarah as he had said, integrity. And the Lord did unto Sarah as he had spoken.
Listen. Every man you see in ministry, in business, in government, in academics, any man doing anything uncommon today, I can tell you, probe them and if they are sincere, they will tell you. There was no guarantee whatsoever. Ah. Lion of Judah, my trust is in you. I am that I am, my trust is in you. You're the Lion of Judah, my trust is in you. I put them on me. My trust is in you. God is not a man that he should lie. Attribute number two. The first attribute up, upon which Bible faith is built is God's integrity. And then number two, his ability. God does not only have integrity. As powerful as integrity is, it takes more than integrity to sponsor performance. Performance is expensive. It takes a union of integrity and ability. There are people who want to do it, but they are limited. Have you stood before someone wanting to help the person sincerely? And yet you say, I wish I had the means. You have integrity, but you do not have ability. Hmm. Second Chronicles chapter 20 from verse 6 and 7. We are probing the ability of God. Is God that powerful? For me to risk my life and destiny, trusting and obeying him. And said, O Lord, God of our fathers, he says, Art thou not God in heaven, and rulest thou not thou over the kingdoms of the heathen? And in thy hand is there not power and might, so that none is able to withstand thee? Verse 7, Art thou not God, who did drive the inhabitants of this land before thy people Israel and gave it to the seed of Abraham, thy friend, forever. He's, he's showing you a display of the power of God. God has ability. He is all powerful. Jeremiah chapter 32 and verse 17. Let's hurry up. Jeremiah 32 and verse 17 it says our lord god behold thou hast made the heavens who made it who made it what is it about your life you cannot make when god says i will make you believe him vet what he made before you he made the heavens and he made the earth by thy great power so he can make my destiny if he made the heavens and the earth and stretch and stretch out harm and there is nothing too hard for you to do in Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 20 Paul teaching the church in Ephesus says now unto him who is able to do someone shout able to do one more time say able to do there are men who are willing to do integrity, but they are not able to do. They are willing to give you a job, but they are not able. They are willing to see you healthy, but they are not able. They are willing to help you, but they are not able. It takes integrity and ability. Now unto him who is able to do exceeding abundantly above all we ask or think according to the power. Every man does according to the power that works with him. Now watch this. If you ask me to lift this um, speaker, I can do my best. I want to lift it. But my strength is limited. Is that true? 
there are many of you who want to do great things apostle i want to build apostle i want a great future for my children apostle i want to be a man of god who serves the purposes of god in truth but it takes more than desire god is able he has ability listen when you combine integrity and ability there is no hindrance to performance integrity and ability integrity and ability there are people who have ability but they don't have integrity they have the power from a human standpoint to help you but they do not have that 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 sense of integrity to help you there are others who have integrity many so but do not have ability but this god has both integrity and ability these are the pillars upon which bible faith rests the integrity of god and the ability of god when i sent thee lackest thou anything because i can back you up hallelujah it takes power to make it takes power to lift it takes power to subdue principalities and the yokes of darkness it takes power to advance more than a good intention please hear me believers i came with a message tonight if it is the glory of god that you want to see manifest in your life it will take more than desire and wishing you will have to learn the law of faith even obedience and it will be based on your understanding that the God who has spoken to you is the God of integrity. The God who has spoken to you is the God of ability. This God can make a fish to carry a coin if it means he's doing that for you to excel. This God can make a donkey an animal to speak without learning this God can make anything at all happen. He can make the rod to board without a root. I submit to you that I have come to see in my own life and to believe in the power and the ability of God. It takes an unwise person to doubt the ability of this mighty God. I have seen God enthrone kings out of nothing. I've seen God humble the pride of men who believe there is no God. My Bible says only a fool will say in his heart, there is no God. Do not laugh at a man who believes in God's integrity and ability. You will spend your life bending your head in shame. Because from nowhere, as we say, you will see that man rise up like an edifice. The ability and the integrity of God standing behind him like a mighty terrible one. There is nothing he tells me that I do not believe him. I have seen, I have tasted and I have seen that the Lord is good. I bring you a very simple message tonight. It's time for your life to stop becoming a compendium of excuses. It's time for your life and your destiny to begin to be an effulgence of the grace of God. It's time for your life to become a preacher, your results to be an evangelist. That people can sit down and say, Lord, I am sorry just by looking at you. There's something about the glory of God being expressed through your life that can literally stop someone from going to Habalis to get power. Because it says it's unnecessary. I have seen an example of the power of God in a man. I have seen an example of the wisdom of God in a man. Can I tell you this? If we do not allow our lives to display the power of God, a generation will come that will forget God. You see the things happening right now? Many young people do not believe that God prospers with dignity. And we can sit down and be laughing at them until we have a whole generation that is swept in witchcraft because of the, the, the need, the economic need of the time. 
Can I tell you this? Enough of too much talking. There must be a display of what God can do. Can I tell you? Your gospel is powerful when your result is standing by you. In Acts chapter 4, when the council called Peter and the others for healing the man at Gate Beautiful, the Bible says when he, they, they wanted to accuse him, but the man he had healed was standing with him. It was an evidence too notable for contention. There's too much proposition of what God can do. My God can heal. The lion of the tribe of Judah we say. The rock of ages we say. And everybody just keeps staring at us. Because nothing in our life captures that reality. I cried unto God and I said, Lord, if you're sending me as a man of God, I cry that you do not send me with a message alone. Uh -uh. It is risky. It is risky to take on this journey with only a message. You need a message and a token of truthfulness called your evidence. You are a true witness when you have a message and the evidence. Ask those who are in the legal practice here. When a judge calls for a witness, your witness is rubbish until you can bring an evidence. An evidence is a token of truthfulness. I was not there when he died. I was not there when he walked upon the earth but the spirit who was there lives in me and now he walks through me to prove that what he said was not a lie. Is someone learning? I made up my mind that for the name of Jesus for my own personal benefit and for the people that he's helped me inspire I will ensure that my life becomes an unending display of the glory of God. There are thrones, there are kingdoms, there are mountains and there are thrones, but only a shoe will reign forever. To his kingdom there'll be no end. Listen. In this crusade ground, there are people who are sick. In this crusade ground, there are people who have been oppressed. You didn't just come to see a man. Some of you came because you believe that perhaps this man that God will use may carry something that will not just whet my appetite and waste my time. That's why you came. Can you imagine how evil it is for people to leave their homes from 10 a.m. in the morning and to come and sit down here and then we preach about a God who is powerful. We say he can heal. We say he can deliver. Then we round up the service and share the grace. What a God. Why should I follow such a God? I will not believe and preach a gospel that has no power. I believe in the power of God. The power of God helps men to see in practical terms the fact that Jesus is exalted. Exalted Lord and exalted Christ. I know that we have a few minutes left, but let me assure you by the God of heaven that God will not allow you go back the same way you came. In one moment, in the twinkling of an eye, your life just changes like night and day. You will look at your former self and wonder, is this how God can change men? Listen, can I tell you how evangelism was done in the Bible? It was not just done by encouraging men to go and preach. It was done because of such display of results. There was such testimony. The recipients of the results were too grateful to keep quiet. Even when they pleaded with them to keep quiet, they couldn't keep quiet. How do you keep quiet over a legion of demons coming out of a man? How do you keep quiet over a woman with five husbands and now met the Savior? Our evangelism is dull and barren because there are no results to back it. It just becomes an annoying episode of arguments. I believe in the power of God. 
I have seen the things that God can do. I have seen the lives that God can change. I have seen what he said come to pass. Please, don't get used to disappointments. God is still alive. Don't get used to disappointments. My God, I don't know about your own, but my God, When we pray, he hears and he answers. When we cry unto him, he can arise. This God can give men testimonies. Please look at me. In one moment, I assure you by the God of heaven, he can turn your life around. It is true. This is not just a preacher's gibberish. I honor you too much and I love you to come and stand here and waste your time and talk rubbish. I present to you Christianity that works. I, I present to you the faith practice that works. What men say is none of your business. What did he say? Even Satan is looking for what he said. Because he needs what he said to destroy you. What did God say? I know what he has said. I know what he has said concerning me. I know what he has said concerning you, that your seed will be mighty. Mama, I know what he said concerning you, that the fullness of your days you will fulfill. I know what he said concerning you, that he is still the God that heals. Apostle, you've not seen my medical report. I know and I understand. But let me tell you, there is a name. There is a name. There is a name. Listen, this man talking before you is not just speaking nonsense. I have been locked inside a mortuary to pray for the dead. I'm not saying like you close somebody inside a mortuary and you are the only one alive there. I have seen demons. I have seen spirits that control territories. I know what the name of Jesus can do. I have seen revival come over nations and territories. I know that this God is not a fraudster. He is not scamming you. Give him a chance to surprise you tonight. We'll take a few minutes to pray. And please hear me. I know you have cried, but shake away unbelief. Man of God, he's giving you a chance again. It may look like you are not called, but shame on the devil. That God who called you is still alive. Standing by you like a mighty terrible one. Lord, I believe. Hmm. If you do not believe God, and you do not release your faith to obey him, you will never see the glory of God manifest in your life. It will remain a theory. It will remain potentials, truths that you cannot defend with your result. And you see, let me tell you this. It is dangerous for your life to continually record failure because it will that failure is a preacher too. It can create a theology about God in your mind and you will mentor nations from your pain and your frustration. This is why you see people serve Jesus Christ for many years, even preachers respectfully speaking. And then one day they wake up and say, I'm tired of lying. I don't want this thing again. I've been, I've been pretending for 15 years. There are many people today, if you invite them for crusades like this, they will say, sit down, let me tell you a story. In 1971, we were the organizers of so, 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 and so crusade. God failed me. You do your God thing, but don't bring it near me again. I've recorded too many disappointments. That's why he has anointed us to redeem the wells of faith and prove to a nation that she's still alive. God is still alive. Babu wani kamaruka Ya Yesu Babu wani kamaruka 
Babu wani kamaruka Ya Yesu Babu wani kamaruka I have searched and searched all the earth Searched and searched all the earth And found that Babu wani kamaruka I have searched and searched all the earth Searched and searched all the earth and found that Abu Wani Kamaruka. Hey, hey. Abu Wani Kamaruka. Yeah, yes. Abu Wani Kamaruka. Abu Wani Kamaruka. We're about to pray. Satan is only as powerful as your ignorance allows him. If you can believe, trust him, and be willing to take actions of faith, you will see the glory of God. bring for me the people that start running out now by the anointing I'm about to minister just for a few minutes there are people who will start running out physically by the power of God please bring them to the stage now thank you Jesus and all the overflows you can just bring them to the front I have searched and searched all the earth search I stretch my hands in the name of Jesus there are many people right now the power of God is coming on them please whether you are an usher or not help them I come by the rod of a higher priesthood and I decree and declare in the name of Jesus who is the son of the living God may that anointing come upon them now things are shifting and changing bring them out by the spirit of the living God I bring you the ministry of the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus Christ Hallelujah. This man, come. This one. Hold on. This man. What do you do? No, no, no. You, please. Where? I'm looking at you and I'm seeing the face of Pastor Paul and Enche on your face. This is what I'm seeing. Huh? Help them, please. I'm looking at him and I'm, I, just, I just saw a flash of it. Maybe it's his spiritual son or something of that sort. He said, what? Oh, he's a pastor in Dunamis. From Bauchi State. Is it true? Come, sir. What do you do? Huh? Where? What ministry? Praise revival. You believe in the power of God? Yes, sir. Lift your hands. Step into a new level from yes, now. Sir. Take that grace now. In the name of Jesus Christ, I release you into a new dimension of the anointing the power of the Holy Spirit you will never be the same lift your voice in one minute and begin to pray everything that is not a revelation of the grace of God in my life I command it to go now is someone praying Plato, lift your voice and pray pray lift your voice and pray help those under the anointing The God of integrity, the one who has ability, the God of integrity, integrity, help them please. 
the God of integrity. Hallelujah. Now hear me. The Bible says, Wherefore God had so highly exalted him and given him a name that is above every other name. It says that at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow of things in heaven, of things in the earth, and of things under the earth. I want to pray for you now that everything that is not of God, that every power that ties you down, it must go now and release your destiny. At the count of three, I will ask you to shout Jesus. And at that shout, hear me, that every door that has refused to open, everything that has tied you must let you go now. Are you ready now? At the count of three. One, two, three, shout Jesus. By the power of the Holy Ghost, be free. Help them please. Be free. Be free. Atmos fear sheep now chains be broken break Holy Spirit Atmosphere Help them please Hallelujah. Hear me. If you came here walking with a crutch or an aid, lift it up now and begin to walk. You came with an aid or a crutch, lift it up now. Lift it up now and begin to walk. Lift it up now and begin to walk. Everywhere you came here with a crutch, anything assisting you, lift it up by the power of the Holy Ghost and begin to walk. In the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God. Please help them. I decree and declare by the power of the Holy Spirit that everything that will not let you go by the power that raised Christ from the dead, I command that it leaves you now. Now. I command that it leaves you now in the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God. Blotting every handwriting, the Bible says, and every ordinance that spoke against us, he nailed it to his cross. Therefore, I decree and declare by the blood of the eternal covenant, I declare you free now, free now, free now, by the blood of the Lamb. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord is showing me a few minutes and then we're done. The Lord is showing me a woman. I'm seeing a woman, I don't know if it's a lump or something at the left side of your breast. As I'm praying for you right now, the power of God is touching you. Right now, that devil leaves your body in the name of Jesus Christ. That devil leaves your body in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Is there someone with the name Godia? I'm hearing a name, Godia. Is there someone with that name? I'm hearing a name, Godia. Please make sure you don't just come out carelessly. Godia. Please let's be orderly so that we don't. Your name? As a man, your name is Godia. That's all right, please. Let's, let's not be chaotic. I will pray for you. I believe in the power of the Holy Spirit and my friend shout Jesus as loud as you can Jesus! in the name of Jesus I decree and declare be free now by the power that raised Christ from the dead help him be free forever in the name of Jesus Christ I pray 
You are the man from Dunamis. The Lord is going to begin to do mighty things through your life. Amen. I see this unction for signs and wonders. Amen. The Lord is bringing upon you. You will start walking in levels, dimensions of the miraculous. Amen. Make sure that pride does not come when that comes. In humility and character, we dispense the gift. May the grace come upon you. In the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for Godia. I want to pray for you. Please don't make it rowdy. I presume that there may be many people with that name. But in the name of Jesus, I pray for you. The Lord is showing me a woman. I can see someone. There's someone. There's a miracle over there. Please make sure. Don't put anybody under pressure. Make sure they are really healed. Make sure they are really healed. You just confirm the miracles. Hallelujah. Now hold on, please. The Lord is showing me a woman six years. You've been trusting God for the fruit of the womb. I'm seeing three miscarriages. Like, not, not just three major miscarriages. Six years. You've been trusting God for the fruit of the womb. Who is that person? Please don't tell lies. We're, this is, we're on air and we're before Jesus Christ. I'm not just saying if you are trusting for a miracle. This exact description. You're not a man, no. You're not a man, no. You're the God who opens doors no man can shut. You're not a man, no. You're not a man, no. You're the God of everything, no one like you. No one like you. No one like you, no one like you, no one like you, no one like you, help them please. You're the God of everything, no one like you. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus Christ. Madam, how long have you been married? 12 years. Well, three miscarriages. That's all right. I will still pray for you. In the name of Jesus. You believe in the power of God to heal? Place your hand on your stomach. Jesus, thank you. You are the God that can open the womb that is closed. Therefore, I decree and declare by the power that raised Jesus from the dead. Help her, please. I command that devil of barrenness out of her now. In the name of Jesus Christ. I declare that according to the time of life, you return with your testimony. We veto through the medical conditions and we declare healing for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. For all of you who are in front for sake of time, in Jesus' name I declare, you are delivered, you are blessed in Jesus' name. Please return back to your seat. What, what's that? Somebody who has been healed? Huh? Oh, she was using the crutches. This point. She was using the crutches before. Yes. And she could walk from the back. Uh, what point. happened to her? Accident. Accident. Yes. For how long? Close to eight years. Close to eight years. You couldn't walk without this. Spinal cord injury. Oh, spinal cord injury. My God. Place your hand on your chest, my dear. I'm still seeing somebody with a crutch. I know what I'm seeing in my vision. Like this aid. I'm seeing this in the realm of the spirit. In the name of Jesus, I decree and declare. Whether you are following online or you are in any of the overflows, I bring you life and healing right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. And for those who are following from their homes, following from hospitals, in the name of Jesus, let the healing power of Jesus touch you right where you are. My dear, in the name of Jesus, I declare perfection over your body. In the name of Jesus, who is the son of the living God. Pain and spinal problem, I curse you right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, I curse you right now. My dear, look at me. Who I just saw light. The power of God will come upon them. They will shout loud to the hearing of everybody. In the name of Jesus, the season of favor. 
right now I stretch my hands in the name of Jesus Christ and I decree and declare that that grace will come on you you will experience very strange dimensions of that grace there is a man of God here I don't know who but I'm seeing a man of God here the Lord is bringing speed to your life and ministry listen please you will literally start running just help that person you're a man of God I'm not saying just you aspire to get into ministry it is a supernatural thing honestly sometimes I don't know why God does this but just a grace coming literally it's like something is pulling you to run this is a supernatural impartation and your ministry will so change your life will change wherever that man of God is Lord you know the secret prayers of that man and as you have given this word I decree and declare may that unction for speed my God may that grace for speed right now let it rest please help them so they don't injure themselves help that man in the name of Jesus Christ by the power that raised Christ from the dead my friend this man wearing suit yes lift your hand the Lord says I should tell you remember ye not the former things nor consider the things of old I don't know what has happened over you but let this grace come upon you I open you by the spirit to a new season take that fire now in the name of Jesus Christ you will never be the same in the mighty and marvelous name of Jesus you will never be. confirm your word over this our father in the name of Jesus, sir, by the privilege of God's grace, I stretch my hands towards you. There is an anointing that is coming on you. And the Lord is saying he's shifting you. You will start having prophetic encounters, dreams, and visionary experiences. I decree and declare that you are stepping into that grace. In the mighty and marvelous name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Now, please, at the permission of your pastor, if he will allow, I want to request that tomorrow night... I want you to come please write your prayer request anything you are trusting God to do the visitations you are trusting God for may I plead and may I request that you come with your prayer request you can call your loved ones wherever they are across the globe they can send it to you and as an act of faith you can bring it here and somewhere in the course of the service we're going to be praying and asking the Lord to visit families. But I assure you that as a result of tonight's encounter, go back and meet testimonies waiting for you. Please shout a loud amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. You will not need to tell Hello. Scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, my son, attend to my sins. Incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart. That no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words. And as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us thank you